Just to clarify, it's not actually a hickey. <laughs> Welcome back to Chronically Musical. My name is Alice and this YouTube channel is a place where I share videos about what it's like living life with two autoimmune diseases and what it's like living life as a professional musician. If you found your way here accidentally, I'm glad you're here. And if you subscribe, you're already ahead of the game. So welcome back. So today's video is some pretty niche content, but I guess one could argue that everything on my channel is pretty niche content. So there's nothing new here. Now, if you're an upper strings player, meaning you play violin or viola, you already know what this video is about, just from reading the title. But if you aren't, you may be wondering, what the heck is a violin or viola hickey? You may even have one yourself and not actually know what it is. By the way, the more politically correct terminology, um, nomenclature, if you will, for this, is a practice mark or even fiddler's neck. Um, but for me and everybody I know, we call it a hickey. So what really is a practice mark? And again, you might have one and not actually know what the scientific issue is. So let me be the first to enlighten you. The general classification of the violin or the viola hickey is considered a cutaneous condition, which is basically just any sort of medical condition affecting the skin. A more specific term is acne mechanica, which truly sounds like a word I just made up. And that refers to a skin irritation caused by friction or rubbing or constant pressure. So basically everything we are doing when we are holding a piece of wood up to our necks for hours and hours a day. One of the long-term effects of persistent acne mechanica in an isolated spot is scarring. So basically, a viola hickey or a violin hickey is just a scar. Now, just a reminder that everybody's different and every body is different and every instrument is different. So while some or most of these practice marks are caused by that constant pressure of the instrument or the chin rest to your neck, Others could actually be caused by an allergy to the type of wood that the chin rest is made out of, or even the screws that hold it in place on the instrument. Whatever the root cause is, practice marks actually kind of suck. I mean, they can be really painful, they can easily get infected, and they don't look that great, frankly. The funny part is, I remember being 13 years old and wanting one so badly. For whatever reason, in the string, classical string world, having a violin or a viola hickey is almost like a badge of honor. It's like, oh, you've been practicing, so your hickey looks really bad today, <laughs> which is such a strange philosophy. One that's also not even true because now this has nothing to do with how much I practice. I mean, it gets worse the more I play, but it's always there. All that being said, I've actually been struggling a little bit more with my practice mark in the last year and a half or two years. I think part of that is because I changed my shoulder rest and that's kind of tweaked my setup a little bit. So I think the instrument is pressing on my neck. It's like covering more surface area or something. Um, and I've also just been practicing and working constantly. So it's getting, uh, it's getting a lot of action. I've taken it upon myself to test out every possible remedy, prevention, tactic, healing solution that I can think of. I'm gonna share with you what I have tried and what has worked for me and what hasn't worked for me. And maybe it will be of service to you. And I know this might come as a shock to some of you, but I am not a medical doctor or a medical professional of any kind. So all of these opinions and experiences and suggestions are entirely my own based solely on my personal experience. So if you are really struggling with your practice mark and it is causing you a lot of pain, you should see a dermatologist or even just your GP and make sure everything's okay. Um, again, these are, this is, this is just my trial and error over the past several weeks and what works for me may or may not work for you. And just real quick, um, if you have a second and you haven't already, can you hit subscribe? It actually means a lot to me and seeing the number of subscribers go up in this tiny weird little community we have on YouTube is a tangible way for me to track that people are maybe enjoying this content, even if they can't directly relate to it. I've gotten comments recently on videos about suppositories where people didn't know how they ended up uh, on that video or why it was recommended to them, but they stayed and watched it because it was entertaining to them. So even if this video is not explicitly relevant to you, 
maybe you'll enjoy watching it or enjoy watching other videos on my channel. Regardless, help a girl out, hit subscribe, like this video, drop a comment, share it, do all of the things you can do on YouTube. It really means a lot. So this first suggestion on how to kind of reduce, um, reduce your practice mark and reduce irritation is pretty obvious. It's to take a break from playing. Unfortunately, this is really not feasible for a lot of us, especially if you are a student majoring in music or a professional musician. It's just not something you can do, certainly not for like long stretches of time. Again, if you are having consistent or continuous discomfort with your practice mark, you need to go see a doctor. Unfortunately, they will probably just tell you to stop doing what's causing the issue. Um, so not super helpful, but hopefully watching this video will be more helpful than that. This will be the first time on record that a violist could potentially be more helpful than a doctor. All right, my second suggestion is investing in a hypoallergenic chin rest. So like I mentioned earlier, some people actually are allergic to the types of wood. I think rosewood is a common thing people are allergic to as well as ebony, uh, which is in a lot of parts of instruments and, and bows. Um, and so if you're allergic to your chin rest, that could be what's causing a lot of irritation. I have a hypoallergenic chin rest on my viola actually. Um, this I've had pretty much since I got the viola and it is the Whitner brand since I've had it they've actually like increased options I guess so you can get um, center chin rests some people prefer especially violists actually prefer center chin rests they have different shaped ones I was looking uh, online yesterday and they have so many options now um, that would be step number one I think for me, if I was struggling, would be to, to switch out my chin rest and get a hypoallergenic chin rest. What's great about these is the screws are, let's see if you can see. Yeah, the screws are like embedded. So my neck is never coming into contact with any metal of any kind. It's just this composite kind of plastic material. Um, so my practice mark is most definitely not from an allergy. All right, so this next suggestion is one that I've actually seen a lot of players use over the years. When I was in school, people had them. I don't see them as much professionally. Um, I'm not sure why that is, but it's called a Strad Pad. Um, and it's, uh, well, let me just show you. Basically it's this like, it's a cushion that you put over your chin rest that is supposed to add like an extra cushion. Um, for your neck and it's supposed to relieve discomfort and just make the whole experience a little bit better and theoretically prevent rubbing um, on your neck. Uh, unfortunately, this is not designed for my Whitner uh, chin rest. So I couldn't actually even test this one out. Um, it has two ways of attaching. You can buy one that has Velcro on the inside and then you glue Velcro to your chin rest and then Velcro this on. So it sits like this. I didn't want to do that. So I got the one that has this like elastic and you're supposed to be able to put the elastic around the chin rest, but it's, it's like a teeny tiny, like I can't stretch it enough. And I got really frustrated and I was also disappointed with how it was made because um, if you can see, this is brand new and it looks like it was like glued on here and it's already coming apart and I, I don't know, I just, this is not a win for me. I mean, if you use it and it works, then that's amazing, but keep in mind that it may not work with your style of chin rest. For the record, they make it in this black color, which actually looks more gray in person, as well as like a tan nude one. Oh, uh, I will say a good feature about this is that it's washable. So. Um, you know, that's great in preventing bacteria and infections and things like that, because this can sometimes like open up. <laughs> it sounds really gross, but sometimes it has sores and stuff. So you, you want to keep everything pretty clean and it's washable. So that's a big plus. This next suggestion I have thoroughly tested and used many times. Um, it's a cloth, which acts as like a barrier between your neck and the instrument, but more specifically, 
a silk cloth because silk is naturally hypoallergenic. It's very, very thin, so it's not going to disrupt your sound as much when it's touching the body of your instrument. Um, and it is like anti friction or whatever like it, it helps prevent rubbing all of those features though mean that it's very slippery so when i'm using it it's actually kind of a hassle because i have to loop it sort of under my chin rest like this um but yeah see i can't even like get it to stay <laughs> so i kind of have to do that and then put it under my shoulder rest constantly having to like re-put it on i would never use it in a performance um and when you're in rehearsal and you're putting things up and down it just like has a tendency to come off and all right so this next suggestion is um a little bit off the beaten path we're getting into like more experimental territory now and so that is blister patches this is specifically the compede brand um but these are those kinds of patches that you put on a blister, typically on your foot or ankle or toe, and you wear them for days and days, and it helps protect the blister and heal and keep it from getting infected. And then I think they fall off over time or you can just peel them off once they aren't as sticky. Um, so I was really excited to try this because the actual bandage itself is perfect for what I needed. Makeup influencer, it's the perfect size it's the perfect shape. It fits my neck perfectly. It's like a matte, it's a matte finish. Um, you take this back off by the way, and it's like, it's more translucent. It's not white. Um, and it just, it was like, I, 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 I thought I'd figured it out. Um, I put it on, I wore it through a three hour ballet and then into the next day, I wore it for two days and it worked great. Like while playing, I had, no pain. This was amazing. I, I mean, I really was like, this, I'm brilliant. Um, my hopes were tragically dashed when I tried to take this off. And it was the most painful experience of my life. <laughs> like, I actually, I took a picture of it, um, but I, I think it actually ripped like the layer of skin off of my practice mark and it was so angry looking and red and it hurts so much if you take anything away from this video it is this do not use certainly not this brand of blister protection sticker things just don't 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 do what i did because it was horrible so continuing on with the more avant-garde experimental treatment prevention options, we have chamois butter, referred to colloquially as chamois butter. Now, if you're not familiar with this, as I wasn't before a couple of months ago, you probably aren't a cyclist of any kind. This is an anti-chafe lotion cream that is used for cyclists to apply in their nether regions. Um, to help prevent chafing and rubbing of the bicycle seat on their legs and booty and private areas. Um, so this is kind of perfect for what, what my practice mark is caused by, which is constant friction and pressure. I actually have a little container of this in my case. It's like a little container that I, that I labeled that says hickey cream on it. And I like to apply it before rehearsals, um, particularly after rehearsals too, because this is actually, it's, it's not just anti-chafe. It also helps soothe and moisturize areas that have already been chafed. So it's like a dual purpose thing here. Don't put it on right before you play. Just like give it like 10 minutes to sink in basically. So put it on, wait a few minutes and then you can play because some of it might come off on your chin rest if you do it right away and that could be an issue. Just be sure before you try this, you check the ingredients on it. Check and make sure this is not something you're allergic to before you go putting it all over your neck. A little goes a very, very long way. Like I use that much for my neck and I just put it on and rub it in and it's very soothing. This area gets pretty dry for me, especially if it's like, I don't know, it gets flaky, it's gross. This is, it's really gross. Um, so this is very soothing for me. Now I have truly 
truly saved the best for last. But I want to preface that by saying this was not technically originally my idea. Um, when I decided to make this video, I wanted to go online and do some research and see if there was anything out there about hickeys and practice marks and how to treat them or prevent them and you know, all that good stuff. And there's like nothing. There's a couple questions on Reddit. Um, but I did find a Strings Magazine interview circa 2011 all about the violin hickey. And in this article, they were interviewing different upper strings players, particularly soloists, and violist Monica Wentz suggested a scar sheet. However, she recommended this scar sheet to be applied directly to the chin rest as sort of a cushioned barrier um, between your neck and the chin rest and the instrument. Um, but I have discovered that applying that scar sheet directly to your practice mark not only provides a little cushion for your neck, but it also actively helps heal the practice mark. Because if we have learned anything, aside from not to use the blister things, we have learned that a practice mark is basically just a scar. So like, duh. <laughs> from my limited experimentation over the last few weeks, this is the creme de la creme of hickey help. It's a hickey helper. And I actually thought about keeping this to myself because I thought, maybe I could trademark this and like mock up a, like, you know, create a sample um, and get it manufactured and go on Shark Tank and target a super, super tiny audience of violin and viola players <laughs> who want to purchase this item. Um, but I decided that I should just share it with you guys because, uh, for one, I, I don't know how I would even go about doing that, but two, you should just be able to do it. This Like, this is not information I should gatekeep, you know? This is information that I think is helpful to any and everyone who plays violin or viola. So let me show you, like, what a scar sheet is. Um, it's... This is the brand, by the way, that she mentions in the article, Psycha Care. I'm sure there's a bunch of others. I just went with this because she tried it um, and recommended it. So it's a silicone gel sheet. So it's literally silicone, flexible silicone, and you actually peel this backing off. Um, I've actually cut part of it already, but that's the cool part about it. You can cut it into whatever shape you want. And the way this works, because I was really curious, like the science of it, the silicone actually acts like a layer of skin on your scar and it reduces and minimizes actual scars um, when you wear this for long periods of time. So I think the recommended like usage time is like 12 to 24 hours. It's it's long, um, but because it, it not only acts as like a barrier against infection and the outside world, um, it helps soften the scar and it reduces the like bumpiness of it. Like it flattens the scar. It does a lot of stuff, but for me, it's just, it's really minimized this. Like, I can't even ex explain to you how much better my neck looks after having used these. Now I, uh, I actually, the, the blister packs were not for nothing because I actually used this shape, because it was so perfect, as a template on my scar sheet and cut out little neck covers in this shape, okay? Because I thought the shape was so perfect. And have been putting these on not only before um, rehearsals and practicing and using them when I'm actively playing, but the real game changer has been sleeping with them. So I'll get home after a concert and I put this on and I sleep with it and the next morning my neck is, you know, it looks just like this. Like it's a little pink, it's still there, it's not gone, but it's really soft and like less bumpy and it's just, it's really helping. Um, I don't know like if it's gonna get better than this if I keep using it or what, but this has been the best thing I've tried by far in not only preventing irritation while actively playing, but in helping irritation after the fact. Um, one thing I will say is 
you don't want to use the chamois butter on your neck before putting these on because it's not going to stick. Um, these are super sticky and flexible and stretchy, but because of like the nature of the area and how your neck moves, um, they do sometimes come off a little bit. So I, I want to try experimenting in cutting a different shape or using maybe a larger piece so that it stays on better, especially when I'm playing. Um, but yeah, this has been like the greatest discovery of my life. I'm so proud of it. Yeah. And another great thing about the silicone sheets is that this is washable. So you use it for a day, 12 hours, whatever. And then you just put a little bit of mild soap and water and you wash it off and then you let it air dry and it becomes totally sticky again and it's not like gross and used. <laughs> um, I don't know how long that'll work for, but I only have two of these and I've been using them both, you know, kind of alternating for like the last two weeks or so. Um, and they're still sticking. Ultimately, it is all up to you and your comfort. Um, I will say another potential option would be changing your setup because sometimes um, getting a new, like in my experience, getting a new shoulder rest has kind of made it worse. So, um, you know, it's sort of a trade off for me because the shoulder rest itself makes me sound a lot better. But, you know, this is a lot worse. So it's kind of like this. But um, yeah, you can experiment with a different chin rest placement, a different chin rest altogether different shoulder rests, all of those things can make, um, can affect the practice mark and the severity of it or the location of it. So that's also something to consider experimenting with. I really hope some of you upper string players found this helpful. And if you're not an upper string player, maybe you're a person who likes to ride bikes and didn't know about chamois butter. And now you know about that, or maybe you're a person who has a scar, um, that, you want to minimize. <laughs> uh, the Psyca scar sheets are not made for this, they're made for that. So, you know, you could take that away from it. Let me know in the comments if you tried any of these out. I want to know that I am not the only one <laughs> who found success with any of these. Um, you can always send me a message on Instagram. And uh, yeah, I'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks for, thanks for tuning in. Bye.